Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Tuesday, June 20th. Been a minute since I've been here with the birth of our son, Luke, firstborn. I am fired up to be back on the mic and in front of the camera talking to you guys about some Jaguars football here. Right now, we're going to talk about questions facing the Jaguars offense as training camp looms here in 2023. OTAs, the offseason program, in the books. Training camp coming up in about a month. Uh, So we're going to take a look at top questions facing the Jaguars on the offensive side of the ball. We will also look at the defensive side of the ball later this week. Fired up to get into it. Uh, But first, before we get into the offensive questions, want to remind y'all to go check out GenJag.com. You can pick up some new gear. We have our Duval is Coming t-shirt available for pre-order right now. Final day to pre-order that. You can go check it out, GenJag.com slash shop. Link in the card above on YouTube. Really appreciate your support. That's the easiest way besides liking, subscribing, tuning into these videos. Go check out GenJag.com slash shop. That's an easy way to support the channel, support what we're doing here. And, you know, support us while we're trying to get through these early stages of of having our firstborn here. So getting into this Jaguars offense, questions facing the Jags offense. They're going into year two of the Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence experience. It was a really fun year one. Got off to a little bit of a rocky start, which shouldn't be a major surprise, right? Trevor Lawrence was trying to wash off the stink of what happened in 2021 with the Jaguars and everything that went down under Urban Meyer. Uh, But once it started clicking for Trevor Lawrence and this offense, it was a thing of beauty at times. And, And I think that moving forward, You can look around the rest of the league and look at this team and say their offense is in a really good position and they should be a top 10 offense bar none in 2023. Maybe even push into that top five. Who knows? Could be one of the very best offenses in the league, but there still are questions, right? One of those big questions, Cam Robinson, starting left tackle, the player who is making the most against the salary cap for the Jaguars in 2023, their highest paid player, Cam Robinson. How long is his suspension going to be? It came out a a little while back that Cam uh, violated the league's PED policy, performance enhancing drugs. We don't know how long a suspension will be. We've heard the Jaguars are appealing. So what's going to happen there? How long will the Jaguars be without their starting left tackle Cam Robinson? Of course, Walker Little going into year three in the league with the Jaguars, former second round pick. He's slated to start at left tackle while Cam Robinson is out. Anton Harrison, he's going to be starting at right tackle for the Jaguars while Cam Robinson is out and they have Josh Wells, who they brought in from Tampa, who's a former Jaguar himself, played played several years for the Jaguars back in the mid-20-teens. He's back to be the swing tackle while Cam Robinson is out. Um, once Cam Robinson is back, I think you look at that offensive tackle room and you feel great. You've got four guys who you can put, that, put out there on the football field and feel decent about the results you're going to get, right? But When will Cam Robinson be back? I'm not sure. And how will Walker Little and Anton Harrison perform in his absence? Like I said, Walker Little, we've seen him play left tackle for the Jaguars in this system. I think you can feel pretty good about the development he's shown. I think you can feel good about, obviously, his stature, his athletic profile, his physical profile. I think Walker Little is going to be fine at left tackle for the Jaguars. Will Anton Harrison be ready to compete at a high level to start the season at right tackle, played primarily at the left tackle spot for Oklahoma um, in college. He's a young player, really athletic, got great length, really, really good feet. I was super high on him coming out of the draft, right? I had him as a top 10 overall prospect in 2023, but still, asking any sort of guy, any, any offensive lineman, any offensive tackle to come in and start at a position that they just simply have not played a ton In the NFL, it's a big ask. So we'll see how it plays out for Walker Little and Anton Harrison while Cam Robinson is out. And and again, we just don't know how long that will be for. Looking at left guard, I think that's a question as well. Because Ben Barch, he solidified himself as the Jaguars starting left guard last year. I thought he did some really good things both in pass protection and in the run game early on in the season. But suffered a major knee injury, had some ligament damage, had, had, had a big time recovery period he's still not fully healthy the Jaguars have said they don't expect him to be ready for the start of training camp when will Ben Bartsch return to health and will he be the same player that we saw last season before he got hurt I'm not sure now you do obviously have Tyler Shatley who you can plug and play 
But Tyler Shatley is a little bit limited when you talk about his physical ability. He's a smart player. He's a tough player. He's very strong. But he's just not the best athlete out there. There are times where he is going to be just overmatched against some of these stellar defensive tackles in the league. I think we've seen a renaissance in the league over the last several years at the defensive tackle spot, interior defensive line. There are so many talented uh, players, you know, along the interior of defensive line in the AFC South, around the AFC, and around the league in general. Jaguars are going to have to face a ton of them. I think you saw at times Tyler Shatley struggled in that regard. I think Ben Barch, if he can be healthy to start the regular season, is going to give them, you know, a higher ceiling and floor at the position, but it remains to be seen when he will return to health for the Jacksonville Jaguars at left guard. You've also got Luke Fortner at center. I think it's a question mark as to where he will be at in year two. Jaguars drafted him in the third round last year, had some ups and downs, gave up a lot of pressure. Again, another guy that was going up against some of these mammoth monster interior defensive linemen, Jeffrey Simmons, A lot of guys that the Jaguars had to face last year, obviously Chris Jones. Um, So can Luke Fortner take a step forward? I think he did take a step forward in the playoffs, both of the Jaguars um, games against the Chargers and the Chiefs. I think Luke Fortner looked pretty damn good. I think you want to maintain that level of play play, and even improve in 2023. um, The center position, very unheralded, you know, when, when fans are talking about football, But if you have a center that can be fundamentally sound, that can make the reads for the offensive line, can call out and get his guys organized, I think that would be huge for the Jaguars in 2023. Luke Fortner is a really smart guy on and off the field. I think you want to see him take a step forward. We'll see if he can do that. Um, And those are the question marks surrounding the offensive line for the Jaguars. Looking at the rest of these guys, the, the skill positions and everywhere else on the Jaguars offense, Evan Ingram, this is probably the biggest question outside of Cam Robinson, right? Outside of when he'll return. Evan Ingram, the contract situation with him, the Jaguars placed the franchise tag on him. They could not get a long-term deal done uh, prior to the start of free agency, so they did the franchise tag. They still have until July 17th to get a multi-year deal done, which would help the Jaguars from a salary cap standpoint for sure. And it would uh, obviously, you know, get Evan Ingram back in the building. He did not participate and was not allowed to participate in the offseason program because he's not technically under contract, hasn't signed the franchise tag yet. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I think for the Jaguars, it is in their best interest to keep Evan Ingram around for the next couple years at least. He's a really, really hard worker, incredible athlete at the tight end position, a guy that Trevor Lawrence has a lot of confidence and trust in, and a guy that made a ton of huge plays for the Jaguars down the stretch. Don't think that they make it to that divisional round game against the Chiefs in 2022 without Evan Ingram's presence. So when will the Jaguars get him back in the building? Will it be a multi-year deal? Will it be the franchise tag? I'm not sure, but you want Evan Ingram back in the building. Even though you do have some depth in that room now that you can feel pretty decent about, you want Evan Ingram there because he is a dynamic athlete at the tight end position, a hard worker, and a guy that everyone wants to be in the building. Now, a question for some that I've seen is where is Calvin Ridley at? How long will it take Ridley to get back into game shape, get back to what he was, or will he ever get back to what he was in Atlanta prior to the suspension? I feel confident that he's good to go right now. And I think training camp will only enhance his confidence in what he's doing and and his chemistry with Trevor Lawrence and the rest of this offense, his understanding of how it all works. Look, I've seen what decent receivers look like on the practice field in Jacksonville. I've seen what not so good receivers look like on the practice field in Jacksonville. I've seen some damn good receivers as well. You know, I've seen Allen Robinson out there. I've seen Christian Kirk. I've never seen a receiver look like Calvin Ridley. When it comes to his ball skills, his footwork, his quickness, his explosiveness in and out of breaks, uh, the way he works. For me, I think Christian Kirk and Allen Robinson have been the closest that I've seen in my five plus years covering the team. Uh, But None of them have looked quite like Calvin Ridley. This is a guy that's motivated. He's not like coming off a major injury or anything like that. He's going to be catching passes from Trevor Lawrence, Doug Peterson dialing it up. That is a non-question for me when you talk about Calvin Ridley and his impact on the game. I think he's going to be a legitimate wide receiver one for the Jaguars in 2023. And they're 
their trade for him just looks better and better by the day, in my opinion. Before we get to the last couple topics, want to just, again, ask you, if you want to support the channel, please smash the like and subscribe button. Uh, you want to support even more, go buy some gear at genjag.com shop. You can get a hat like the one I'm wearing right now. You can also pre-order that Duval is coming to you again. Today is the final day to pre-order, and that's the only way to get one of those shirts. So, Again, thank you so much for your support. If you if you support us by watching the channel, by buying stuff on ginjag.com slash shop, whatever it is means the world to me. Really, really appreciate it. Now, getting back into these questions facing the Jaguars offense as training camp is right around the corner, will the second and third round picks make an impact in year one? Um, I think it's going to be really interesting. Britton Strange, the Jaguars' second round pick, tight end out of Penn State, very high on his talent, his ability, Um, the versatility that he adds to the Jaguars offense. Tank Bigsby, third round pick out of Auburn, the running back, love what he can do as well. But what type of impact will they be able to have for the Jaguars in year one? I think when you look at Britton Strange, obviously Evan Ingram is in the building. Luke Farrell's in the building. Garrett Prince as well, the Jaguars like. I think Britton Strange, he will have a role as a pass catcher but not a featured role, right? I think Evan Ingram is clearly going to be that guy. And you've also got Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, and a myriad of other talented skill position players. So I just don't think Britton Strange is going to come in and be like a 40 or 50 catch guy for the Jaguars in year one. But I think what he'll be able to do is provide little bits of sparks here and there uh, in a variety of ways as a pass catcher, as an inline blocker. And I think his biggest impact in year one for the Jaguars is going to be as a space blocker, a guy who has the athleticism, the physicality to get out in space and create holes for Travis Etienne, for Tank Bigsby, for other receivers that could get the ball on screens and quick game stuff. I think Brenton Strange being able to line up as an H-back on the line of scrimmage in the slot and be able to go out and block and block at a high level in space is going to add an element of physicality to the Jaguars offense that they didn't really have in 2023 at the position, right? Chris Manhurts, more of an inline blocker in space was not nearly as good as Britton Strange's. This is a guy that can target and locate linebackers, safeties, corners at the second level and blow them up, create huge lanes for runners, to, to explode through. And I think that's going to be huge for the Jaguars offense. I think that is going to be his biggest contribution. So if you're just looking at this guy and you're like, oh, he only ended up with 20 to 30 catches in year one, didn't have a great year. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. I think he could have the 20 to 30 catches and still have a really good impact on the Jaguars offense. And as for Tank Bigsby, I think he's going to be very quickly vaulted into that RB2 role. And I think he's going to end up being the Jaguars short yardage back. They struggled a bit to get into the end zone um, and get first downs and short yardage last year. Part of that just had to do with the blocking up front was not always consistent. But I think Tank Bigsby, the physicality he can bring to the position, along with his explosiveness and his creativity, uh, I think he's going to end up being a guy that they lean on down the stretch in short yardage situations. And I think he'll do a better job than anybody that they had on the roster in 2022. And that's not a slide against Travis Etienne, but you look at Etienne's skill set, he's not a power back. Can he run with some power behind his pads? Yes, he can. But you want to get Travis Etienne in space. You want to get him outside on those outside zone plays. Um, Tank Bigsby can do some of that as well, but he just brings a little bit more of that physicality to the position that I think is going to help the Jaguars in those short yardage spots. And that's a that's an area that this team will need to improve on in 2023. Now, just how good can the Jaguars offense be? That's the final question I have. They appear to have the talent across the board, both at the skill positions and along the offensive line, in my opinion, especially when you get Cam Robinson back from that suspension uh, to have one of the best offenses in the league. But the question is going to be about Trevor Lawrence's improvement. He improved greatly throughout the 2022 season in this system. I think you now see this offseason, he has taken even more command of the offense. The offense is designed around him. Press Taylor and Doug Peterson are really trying to do everything they can to emphasize what Trevor Lawrence does well and mitigate the things that maybe this offense and and the pieces around him don't do as well. So I think you're going to see a much better offense. I think you're going to see a much better Trevor Lawrence. Can't wait to see how it plays out. But I think the question is just, what is the ceiling of this offense? I wouldn't want to put a cap on it, quite frankly. I think with the talent, 
with the quarterback play, with the coaching, the play calling, this could be one of the very best offenses, as I said before, in the NFL in 2023. And I'm kind of banking on that actually happening. I think betting against Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence with all the talent they have uh, at their disposal would be a mistake. So I can't wait to see how it all plays out. But those are my top questions facing the Jaguars offense as training camp looms. We will do the defense later this week as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please smash that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a show on here. And again, if you want to support us further, help us raise this little newborn Luke. Check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing. Again, Duval is coming. T final day to pre-order that is today, Tuesday, June 20th. Y'all have a good one, Duval, and thank you so much for tuning in.